Ed, thanks for joining us here on Blue Notes. It's great to be here. And I've noticed that we've brought the monkey in. And you used to have a monkey in your office. I did. I had a, a monkey. I don't know what the name was, but it had a helmet. If you pulled its finger with this thing to it, it would, it would do a three, two, one countdown and it would shake and it would say, blast off. Well, um, hopefully you're feeling at home here. Yeah, I do. No, it's, we're, you know, it's good to be here with you and, and, the, monkey, and the monkey. The nameless monkey. That's right. So we're here uh, more seriously to talk about storytelling, right. uh, which is a technique that you have used extensively as in your career at NASA um, to help grow and develop their project program leadership capability. So in all of your experience, what, what really makes a good story? I think, you know, uh, you know, a story that works is something where it's real. It's a challenge. There's a problem there. People can relate to it. And along the way, there are surprise. There's things you don't expect that are coming up. And then if you get a good outcome, you know, that, that's a bonus. But I think that element of surprise and, and a challenge and a problem that people can identify with. And how do you think storytelling can help an organization really achieve success? When I got to NASA, one of the big challenges were coming off the Apollo era. And so there, there was a sense of, hey, we're good at what we do. We don't need to be trained. We, we know stuff. But what I found out was if you got people in the room who started sharing their stories, stories of projects that were successful, stories of problems, the challenges that they had, it opened up people to think, to learn, to have insights, and to move forward. So it just a, I think it's a natural way for people to, to like to learn and share and, and talk. So on the other side, flip side of technology though, yeah. um, and you sort of mentioned a lot of different mediums to share stories and gain knowledge. Do people ever get overwhelmed? Is there a way for people to filter how they get their stories? I don't think they get overwhelmed by stories. I mean, if we're talking, if we're telling about a good challenge, a good story, we, we get engaged in it. I think you can get overwhelmed by information overload and just a lot of things, a lot of things in the email. And I think there, what your organization wants to do is, how do we focus? How do we prioritize what's most important? Where do we want to start, right? And so one of the things that I think is important is, is uh, sometimes what's called critical knowledge. You know, what are the, where are the places we want to start? My own rule of thumb I would tell to the team or organizations I work with is if we're trying to engage in understanding something or changing something, let's limit it to three things and see how that goes and then you can go beyond that. But the stories in themselves are just engaging. We're always talking and we can, we can you know, moderate how much we want to listen to and how much we want to change. That's fantastic. And I think uh, I'm thinking about ANZ and, and we're on this organizational transformational journey. It's, it's a huge amount of change for us to digest as individuals and we have really big business goals and goals for our customers. You've talked in the past about risk, political risk, the risk of people, uh, human error, right. lack of communication. How can stories help an organization like ANZ in this time of transformation? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm biased that I think what success, successful leaders do, teams do, projects, organizations, is they're very good at focusing on people, right? And uh, what I've seen in terms of risk, projects and, and different activities are usually geared around the risks that you know, we're looking at. In organizations like NASA, maybe it's true of ANZ, the focus is often on technical risk. People in the organization like technical risks because that's what we do, that's what our expertise is. They get comfortable in, in fiscal risk because you have to, you have to deal with the money. And the risk often we, we avoid is the interpersonal, the, human, the social risk. Because if I have an issue with you, maybe I don't want to say it. Maybe I'll get into trouble or maybe it's... And so I like to use stories from the standpoint of tell me a story about... Well, look at this group here. I said, think about a time that you were most proud to work for ANSET. And, and come up with a short story about that. I don't know at all what's going to happen, but if it's true that I've seen at NASA and other places, Many of the stories, and probably most of the stories, will be about people, will be about the social engagement, will be about working together to overcome things. So I think it, it helps to focus on the importance of leadership, the importance of experimentation, the, the, the notion of how do we talk together and, and build relationships to be successful. Fantastic. Thank you, Ed, for, for joining us here at Blue Notes. My pleasure.